Ahmed's address is the finest in Paris. Hello everyone and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage, where Sean and I take a look at every single theatrically released animated film in chronological order. I'm Tanil. And I'm Sean. Today we're looking at Disney's 1970, The Aristocats. The Aristocats. Da, 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 da. This one's pretty nostalgic for me. It's so boring. Oh, come on. Didn't you have fun watching this? I've watched this movie so many times. Uh, and you know what? Uh huh. Until we rewatched it just a couple days ago yeah. for this, uh huh. I couldn't tell you anything that happened. Oh. I mean, okay. That's fair. This it's, is not an exciting film. It is incredibly forgettable. Give. Give it, like, a week or two mm -hmm. after watching it, and you'll have troubles remembering the exact specifics of anything that happened in this film. I mean, maybe you will. I remember this movie pretty clearly. I mean, the movie is perfectly fine, but, like, I don't know. It never really stuck to me mm -hmm. like many other Disney films did. Yeah, I, that's fair. I I feel like this movie... And um, one other Disney film coming up here in the Dark Ages that we're going to be seeing are probably, uh, excluding the package films, mm -hmm. are probably two of the most for forgettable... Slash forgotten. Forgotten movies. And to the people who like them, they really like them. But they don't, like, love them. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah, I like that movie. And that's how I feel about this one. It's like, yeah, I like the Aristocats. Is it my favorite? No. But when I start like naming off some of my favorites, like I get to the Aristocats eventually. Well, yeah, because you have to get to the end of the list at some point. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, kidding. no. It's like, like it's one that comes to mind after I've named off a handful, you know? Okay. Um, and I mean, just because I'm saying that this movie is boring and does not appeal to me particularly, mm -hmm. I don't think it's a bad film. I don't think anyone thinks this is a bad film. It's just not a great film, you know? There's like 15 seconds of, ugh, and then like the rest of the movie is perfectly pal palatable and fine and perfectly nice and you'll let any kid watch it and there's... Like, they'll have a good time. Oh, are you talking about the Scat Cats? Yeah, I'm talking about the Scat Cats with the, one, like, uh, with the one, one Siamese cat that uh -huh. sings... About uh, fortune cookies? About fortune cookies, and, like, yeah. that's just kind of racist and not cool. But everything else about the movie is perfectly fine. Yeah. And, yeah. like, thank God that element goes up by and, like, that, and like then that. it's done. And yeah. it's like... Yeah, that's not okay, but, like, it's... <sighs> it's over so quickly. It's over so quickly that it doesn't even matter. Mm-hmm. So, plot? Sure. So, there is... Regale us with the plot, since, you know, you can barely remember it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't need to remember it. It's very short. Uh-huh. Um, there's an aristocratic old lady... She's going to die soon, so she sets up her will so that her cats will inherit her fortune when she dies. Mm -hmm. The cats are the main characters, the Aristocats. Mm -hmm. The aristocratic cats. And then after the cats die, her butler gets her fortune. The butler overhears this and decides he's going to kill off the cats. Uh, and by kill off the cats, he's just going to throw them off into, like, random nowhere. Mm -hmm. He does so, but then he gets worried about it. So he tries to kill them off. Later, or no, he just tries to ship him off to Timbuktu at the end of the movie again. Yeah. So he's not trying to kill them. He's just trying to get rid of them. Get rid of them, which, dude, just kill the cats. Uh huh. Come on. Uh huh. Eat the rich. Eat the rich. And then you'll become the rich. <laughs> Come on. It's real straightforward here, guy. <laughs> Either way, the most, the majority of the movie is the cats trying, trying to, to get, get back home. home. Yeah. And they run across an alley cat, Allie O'Malley. Mm-hmm. 
something DeLacy, I don't know, he sings this whole song about how his name is like 10 million names long. Uh-huh. And most of them sound like not words. <laughs> now those of you watching who know all his all of his name, go ahead and write it down in the comments. Uh, uh, either way, he helps them get back and uh, they run across some ducks and then they run across a uh, geese. They're not ducks. <laughs> They're geese. They run across some <laughs> British geese. I never, I never noticed before that they were British. Uh -huh. They're on holiday. Yeah, in France because of course this movie takes place in France. Every Disney movie takes place in France. It seems. <laughs> the last Disney me movie we watched was <laughs> the Jungle Book. Okay, but like if a movie is set in Europe. It seems like most of them are set in France. What was the last Disney movie that was set in France? You're putting me on the spot here. Uh, yeah, because I have no idea what you're talking about. Um. Uh, <laughs> Beauty and the Beast? <laughs> that hasn't come out yet! Wow. <laughs> so? Uh. I swear. I don't know. There's been a lot of movies set in France recently, okay? Yeah, but they haven't been Disney movies, you pleb. I swear that Disney has had other French films. Are you thinking of 101 Dalmatians? No, that one's British. In London? That one's definitely British. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Are you thinking of Sword in the Stone, which is also set in London? <laughs> no. Are you thinking of Sleeping Beauty, which takes place in Germany, question mark? I don't know. Europe. It's in Europe. Generic Europe. Uh-huh. I don't know. Are you thinking of Lady in the Tramp, which takes place in <laughs> small town America? <laughs> <gasps> oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, Sean doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Are you sure you're just not just thinking of like gay Paris or something like that? Something Possibly. that's not Disney. Possibly. We've watched a lot of films, mm -hmm. okay? So they get back. Mm -hmm. There's a fight scene. The butler gets shipped off to Timbuktu. The old lady makes a house that is open to all cats. Because mm -hmm. she's the a crazy cat lady. The charity of rich. Of the rich. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the plot. Uh-huh. It doesn't matter. This movie doesn't care about its own plot. Mm -hmm. That's not why you're here. The movie wants you to just have a good fun time with characters interacting with each other, some enjoyable songs along the way, and that's the movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> you pretty much described how most critics thought of this film when it came out, and since then. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the kind of general consensus is either, you know, like, it's fun, but you're not going to get a whole lot out of it kind mm -hmm. of thing. Even Milt Call was um, very outspoken about not being happy with how the story came together on this one. Mm. And, like, mm -hmm. to be perfectly honest, this movie just r reminds me of a couple of the other uh, Dark Age films we watched recently. Uh, just, like, The Jungle Book and Sword in the Stone. There are other movies that... Where it has kind of like that episodic... It's very episodic where they go to place, they do a thing. They go to place, they do a thing. Mm -hmm. There's technically an overarching plot in both of them, but it's less important. I mean, the Jungle Book's plot is more important than like these other two movies, but it's just kind of there to string along this series of events of things that happen. Yeah. Which, again, is fine, but I definitely prefer a stronger plot-based movie most of the time. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. That's fair. Um, the, I mean, yeah, like, the, this movie went through a lot during production. Um, a lot more than I think 
most people know. I think most people nowadays probably know about the O'Malley stripe situation, where it's like O'Malley was going to have stripes. They're then, like, budget! Yeah, but Toss then, them! Yeah, yeah, like, you can find, um... Like the rough, rough animation where where O'Malley has his stripes and it looks so good. Now he's it just a generic so orange cat. Yeah, um, but there was other things too. There's there's a lot of there was a lot of shortcuts taken with the production of this film. Like the kittens were all going to have actual designs rather than just being three copies of each other with. Different color palettes. Different color palettes and different, like... Bow ties or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the kittens would have different character designs. Duchess went through numerous uh, character designs, and you can see them throughout the film because they didn't <laughs> go back and reanimate her. Oh, like, man. in the in the first scene, she's in with uh, Madame Bonfamile... Bonfamile... I can't say French words. Lady Rich Lady. Uh, she, like, her face is, like, more, like, longer and elegant. Okay. And she's got, like, this this blue um, collar on that disappears like, after that scene. Um, uh. And then also there was uh, uh, Milk Call was designing Duchess and had a few scenes with her where her eyes were a lot bigger and more expressive. Wow, and then, your eyes, they're like yeah. sapphires. See, you remember this movie. Um, but I, I actually have pictures for you to show, like a comparison here of like an old milk call drawing versus what came out in the final film where her eyes are a bit smaller and she's got more like cheek fluff. And I really like the milk call drawings versus the final film. It's just like <laughs> so pretty, <laughs> but oh well. This is a movie based around character interactions, mm -hmm. but I gotta say both of the male kits are boring. Toulouse and Berlioz? Yes. Yeah, I mean, okay, Marie is obviously the most popular character from this movie. Well, no, duh. Like, by far, Marie has her own, like, clothing line compared to everybody else in this <laughs> film. Uh, like, I think she's a really big hit in Japan, too. Probably. Like, not just here. Mm-hmm. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Yeah. Uh... There was also, as far as other things that were cut, originally there was two villains of the film. It was Edgar the butler and another character who was like a maid. And they were both working together to get rid of the cats. Mm. But then the maid ended up getting cut. So it was just Edgar. And this actually, this whole story was originally going way back into production. Like back in the early 60s. It was originally planned to be a live action movie oh. at Disney, and it was based off of a book set in New York where the same kind of thing happens. You know, there's a rich lady who wants to give her inheritance to her cats, mm -hmm. and so then the mom cat outwits the butler and maid by hiding her kittens all over the place so that they can't kill them and... Like, that's how the story was supposed to go down. And then the project got shelved. And then, like, brought back up. And they, like, redid a script for it. And then they didn't like the script. And then eventually Wooly Reitherman got his hands on it. And he's like, hey, why don't we just do this after The Jungle Book? And we'll do it as an animated film. And it was, it was actually the last animated film that Walt approved to go into production before he passed. Hmm. Neat. Yeah. I will say, mm -hmm. even if this movie is incredibly forgettable, and I think, like, most of it's bland, as I've said, mm -hmm. I do still enjoy the animation of this movie. Oh, well, of course, like, yeah. It's still the Disney team doing good Disney animation. So, mm -hmm. like, well, even like, things that feel like they're completely pointless for the film look good. 
Oh, yeah. It's still great animation. Uh, there's a lot of great, like, little comedy scenes. I love the stuff with the geese, especially O'Malley coming down the river, and they're like, they're oh, drowning cat. Him. Yeah, a cat learning how to swim, and he's like, Stop. Stop! Get away from me! Push Scram, off. girls! <laughs> I love it. So... And, like, the, the, the two dogs that didn't need to exist in this movie. Oh, Lafayette and uh, Napoleon? Yeah. yeah. Napoleon and Lafayette, they did not need to be in this movie at all. No. And they, they collectively probably take up a good, I would say, seven to ten minutes of this movie. Oh, yeah. It's like a real time sink for nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Just uh, some comedy scenes, which you can argue is, is like most of this movie? way... It's, it's almost too cartoony for the, the realistic rest of the movie? style of the movie. Yeah. Uh-huh. They feel out of place. But even still, it's some really fun, charming animation. Yeah. It's like, you'd miss it if it was gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, they're one of the more interesting things that happened in this movie, and yet there's no reason for them to be in this movie. Mm-hmm. I also think this is one of the easiest movies to pick apart who did what scenes, if you are interested in, like, if you're someone like me who's interested in in knowing the nine old men and, like, what work they did, I feel like this is one of the movies where it's, it's easier to tell who did what because it went through a whole lot less polishing mm. after the animators originally had it. Okay. And I'm interested in, like, do you think the same? Where it's like, you kind of see, like, oh, this is obviously, like, a Milt Call scene, or, wow, that's really an Ollie Johnston character. I'm going to be perfectly honest. Uh -huh. I have not studied the Nine Old Men. Enough? Even a tenth as much as you have. Uh-huh. So I'm sorry to say that, no, I really didn't pick up on any of that. <laughs> okay. Well, then I'll, I'll run over some of them. So, now, and a lot of these characters, like, in, inter, interweave. In, are interwoven, so... Right, it's like, not... multiple animer, animators worked on Duchess, multiple animators worked on Edgar the butler. So it was a lot more of, like, scene-by-scene scene animation as right. compared to I-do-this-character type of thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's actually a lot closer to the animation structure of today's films yeah then then it was back in the day well i think a lot of that too has to do with this is a fairly large ensemble cast okay so they just kind of had to share the characters well yeah and and there's a lot of characters who get like a lot of scenes like you get a lot of scenes with Edgar. You get a lot of scenes with Duchess and the Kittens and mm -hmm. O'Malley. So it's like you can't just give that to one supervising animator. You've got to have several. They're going to die. They're going to die if you do that. Uh, that being said, like, John Lounsbury did pretty much all the uh, Scat Cat and the Alley Cats. Mm. Which shows. John Lounsbury also did... Um, the Italian chefs in Lady okay. and the Tramp. Yes. Yeah. A lot of fun. Mm-hmm. So Milt uh, did a lot of the scenes. I think he he was the supervising animator for Madame. And that shows because, god damn, she looks so good. I love her animation so much. Mm -hmm. it's, oh! it's like there are a few scenes there where she looks almost rotoscoped mm -hmm. and but like like directly rotoscope but it doesn't quite feel like she's, she's rotoscope not, at all i i don't like i think there's film reference but i don't know if milt used it because at that point it's milt like, call and he don't care he don't need it like like yeah he's used it in the past but like i it's really realistic but i don't think that he actually used any Wow. Yeah. She looks great. Yeah. Holy yeah. cow. Yeah, she's just, oh, I just, mm, I just, I love it so much. Okay, yeah. I can see that now that you've pointed it out. Mm-hmm. 
And um, he also did a few scenes of Edgar. He really enjoyed animating Edgar. Uh, Duchess, I mentioned before. O'Malley, we mentioned before. Because he, he was doing, he was the stripe guy, right? He was the stripe guy. Yeah, before before the stripes got cut. Um, they just ripped Ollie him was, off. Yeah. Well, and what's fun is like, I think this is also fun because you can tell when two people were supervising animators on a character. So like Ollie and Milt were working on O'Malley. Mm -hmm. And O'Malley has both the like design sense of Milt, but it's also got like that soft expressiveness of Ollie. And then I, I like can almost guarantee you the majority of the kitten animation was done by Ollie because it's just like too soft. <laughs> and like I love Ollie's work. But, like, if he's alone working on something and he's doing, like, these three characters, like, I love the kittens, but, like, I feel like somebody else should also be in there with him. Because, like, just, like, they, they're not as solid as all the other characters, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Frank, Thomas, and uh, Eric uh, Klelwerk worked on Napoleon and Lafayette. Now, see here. <laughs> I'm the leader. I'm the one who decides when we charge. Keep a hold of this guy's voice. Yeah. It'll show up a couple more times uh -huh. in the next couple films. Well, it's kind of like Phil Harris coming back playing Blue and mm -hmm. Thomas O'Malley. Oh, yes, that too. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, this is right in the line of. We like this voice actor. We're going to use them a lot. Yep. Just like Winnie the Pooh back in the day. When you mean Sterling Holloway? Sterling who Holloway is like still doing voices for them. Yes, like he's still doing. <laughs> Was he in this movie? Uh. Mm, Was he the mouse? I don't think he was the mouse. No. Okay. No. Okay, he didn't do anything on this movie, but he he does characters like every other movie, it feels like. And he's not done. Oh, yeah. He's not done. Well... Because he has yet to do Winnie the Pooh. Madame, in this movie, is played by the... Um, one of the nannies in Mary Poppins. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's neat. Yeah. It's been too long since I've seen that film. <laughs> <laughs> we just kind of both got real quiet and oh. like, Mary, Mary, Mary Poppins. Uh, Frank Thomas also worked on O'Malley and Duchess and the Geese and Edgar. Uh, Milt also worked on Fru-Fru, which he found to be a really difficult project, actually. Do you know who Fru-Fru is? The horse. <laughs> You're right. making me look like who's Fru Fru. Who, who the Fru Fru is Fru Fru? <laughs> Fru Fru is the horse, but Milt found it to be challenging because he, at that point in his career, he's like, I feel like I've animated horses every way that you can animate a horse. Mm. And so he had a hard time trying to come up with a unique design and way to move her that was different from other horses he had animated. Oh yeah, because he probably worked on like he worked most on horses, like Prince Philip. And I, I immediately thought of horse. Prince Philip's horse. Yeah, and, and did think... he do some of like the really old like Mickey Mouse short? Oh yeah, it, well, horses and I think and stuff. he also was part of um, like Ichabod Crane. Oh yeah, and yeah. that stuff. So yeah, like he's animated plenty of horses at this point. He's like, it's a horse. It do horse. It do horse things. And we don't have that, like, sleek Russian horse stuff going on. So <laughs> we got American... Clompy. Clompy, ugly horse. Ugly horses. Horses are ugly, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> this is just your uh, regular PSA to let you know that most horses are but ugly. Are really awkward, to Any say the least. <laughs> um, Anyways... Milt also worked on Georges, and yeah, uh, 
this had this film had a pretty successful box office every single time it was released in the theaters. Okay. It did well. Did it I'm assuming it had a smaller budget than some of the other recent films or not? I mean, it, with all the cuts they were making production-wise, I'm guessing so. I th I think when I was looking at it, I saw that it had a production of like 4 million, which I that mean, seems by today, really low for Disney standards. Yeah, even back in the 70s, that seems pretty low. Well, yeah, because, like, even Snow White had, like, a larger budget than that. Or it was, like, $3.5 million, but 1930s money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or something like that. Mm-hmm. So, wow. Yeah. Everybody Wants to Be a Cat. Is still is a, a bop. Is still a fantastic song, and I love how it changes styles like seven times in there. Mm -hmm. Even if there's like that thirty seconds of yikes, yeah, or fifteen. I don't know. Our patrons pointed out something interesting that I didn't know about. One of them, and I, I didn't verify this like by looking up um, footage or anything. Yeah, but they said that one of their copies of the movie that got released cut. Like the Duchess's DVD, the DVD Blu-ray apparently cuts the slow section with Duchess singing with the harp with the harp, which is weird because I always really liked that section. Mm -hmm. So it gave you a nice like slow before it got to like the climax of the song. Here's a little bit of research we did with our copy, and like I'll have pointed out whether we found it on our disc or not. Yeah, because this is interesting. Yeah. One one last note that I have written on my notes. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I personally cannot feel much sympathy uh, for a bunch of rich people trying to get back to their rich life. <laughs> j yeah. J just saying, in con today's current, like... In today's current climate, the, the, the plight of the cats is a little... The plight like, of the rich just doesn't matter to me. Yeah, you're just like, mm, you know what, I don't... Y'all can just not. I mean, this does <laughs> not make the villain of this movie a hero by any means. No, no. He because he just wants to get rid of them so that he, he has the He can be the, the rich asshole. Yeah. yeah. It's like, if he was a Robin Hood character and wanted to take out, <laughs> yeah. take out the cats and then dispense the money upon all of the people, then cool. Yeah, but no, I mean, like, at least, at least Madame is a great, like, she's such a nice old lady. <laughs> she's a nice, crazy old lady. Yeah, who, I guess. Who just wants to, like, take care of her cats. Well, and I always thought, like, okay, let's get into the story, story a little bit. Mm -hmm. Edgar's an idiot. Because, like, well, no, duh. Because, like, okay, sure, she dies... You get the cats. You have two options. You could just wait to kill the cats after she dies. Uh-huh. Or, like, the money's yours, dude. Like, what are, what a cat's gonna do with money? Mm-hmm. You gotta take care of the cats. Oh, the cats wanted this new car. car. <laughs> I was gonna say TV, but TVs haven't been invented yet in the time of this movie. Uh-huh. Uh, they also wanted all the champagne. and It's like, dude... You're an idiot. No one's going to care if you use the cat's money. <laughs> no one. Except for the other really old guy who is also going to die soon. Uh-huh. Who wrote up the will to begin with. Like, nobody cares. Edgar. <laughs> just, just wait. Just wait. Because he's not going out of his way to kill the missus he just wants to kill the cats yeah yeah like like he's at no point ever, ever expressed in... any interest in getting rid of the lady no so he's willing to wait until she dies off yeah so just wait until she dies off and then either get rid of the cats or don't even care yeah come on like <laughs> <laughs> There's incompetent, and then there's just an absolute idiot. idiot. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. We're taking down Edgar. Uh, hot takes. <laughs> hot takes on, on the Aristocats. Those cherished villains of <laughs> your childhood. After that, we'll be going after... Uh, 
I don't know, Swiper the Fox? <laughs> From Dora the Explorer? Edgar's Edgar has Just because be... they told you you couldn't take it doesn't mean you can't still take it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dang it. Or what does he say? Like, ah, oh, shucks. shucks. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. That's, That's what, what he says. Is. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 All right, I think that's enough tomfoolery from us. Yeah. There's there's really not a whole lot to say about this movie. I know the Disney reviews tend to be longer, and I like to keep them that way. Um, and even still, like this one's probably shorter than a lot of our reviews have been. Yeah, like there's just there's not there's not a whole lot to say about this movie. The production, while being messy, was fairly straightforward. Um, you can see the dissatisfaction that like Milt has with the way the productions are going, and that's going to be playing a a bigger part when we get into some later Disney films. Yeah, <laughs> especially yeah. like. Especially since they're making so many cuts to the quality of the animation. Mm -hmm. And Milt is the quality control guy. Yeah, he, he is the, I make things look pristine. Right, well, I mean, and he was the guy that you go to, to, like, like he would draw over your stuff to get it closer to where it was supposed to be on style. On model following and stuff like On that. model, yeah, because he was the character designer for most of these movies, you know. So, uh, that that's going to be playing a bigger part as we keep continuing forward. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Well, either way, uh, we're still in the 1970s because mm -hmm. this year is forever long. <laughs> uh, so, next time, we are going to Dougal and the Blue Cat from an English, uh, England and France co-production. More cats. Yay! Okay. <laughs> I'm okay with cats. Cats are never ending. All right, see you then. Dummy so do do so me do. Every truly cultured music's do. Don't know. You must learn your skills and your art.